All right, if I talk funny today, it's because I just had a filling in this one tooth repaired and my mouth is still all numb here from being at the dentist. But today I'm going to paint the gas pocket there. And I also wanted to show you some parts I got. I think I might pull the rear springs, rear shocks today. And then uh, once this tacks up, I think I'll sand those spring pockets and start painting the undercarriage maybe tomorrow if I don't start yet today. I got to get the, the rear bumper off too. So a little bit of work yet to, you know, do get the rear bumper and the uh, springs out. I got primed. I, I, get, I didn't video. I thought I had video of the underneath. But anyway, the frame, the, the control arms and everything's all primed. So get the springs out and the shocks and I can finish sanding and priming and start painting. I wanted to show what I picked up here. Yeah, they're going to be new rear shock absorbers. And they came with all the hardware and the instructions. In case if somebody wants to read the instructions. It says revised 219.71. So I imagine these shocks are from probably the early 70s maybe, but they're they're brand new. I mean they they're they're brand new. That's the bottom line. I honestly don't remember if I showed the springs, but yeah, I got new springs too, so those will be going in with the new shocks. Alright, first things first, I'm going to get my sandpaper and uh, get in here and sand this out. And I didn't drill the holes because I want to put the tank and the filler neck in and have it all installed to make sure I don't want to have the holes in the wrong spot. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'll drill the holes for the filler neck after I install it. My dad commented and asked me why I hadn't drilled the holes. I got it all sanded out and I've been asked why, how I'm going to paint this surface against here. And I primed that surface in there. I sanded it all out really good first and then I primed it. But I can easily spray it through here. Get my spray gun up in the wheel well and just shoot it there. So that's I'll spray this first and I'll spray in the pocket and uh, I think I'm going to start uh, masking some things off right now. Got it all masked off. It looks pretty darn good. And I covered up the engine compartment and I stuffed sheets down in around the engine and then put those sheets on so hopefully I don't get any Overspray, I'm not going to I'm going to use the HVLP gun for that and hopefully I won't have a lot of overspray, but yeah, I got to use my Christmas present, the masking machine. It works pretty darn good. I really like it. That looks nice. All right, so I'm going to uh, maybe mix up a little paint, probably use my, that little HVLP door jam gun, probably mix just a, I'm just going to mix a tiny little bit of paint and give that a shot. Well, it's all painted up and it looks pretty darn good. Once the filler neck's in there and everything, it'll look amazing. I got the truck out of the garage, so I thought I'd just get a couple seconds of video of it. The car just kind of sitting there. As long as I was spraying, I sprayed the little screws that hold the filler neck into the opening there. And I sprayed, I got a little paint green on my hands, but it don't matter. Sprayed the ring that holds this gasket on the inner fender, and I got to make a new gasket. So I'll, uh, I got some sheet rubber. I'll just cut another one out that's just regular, everyday soft rubber, like an inner tube almost. There we go. Kind of a look at the car sitting here in the garage. Oops. I'm going to work on pulling the rear bumper, I think. 
All right, I got the bumper off. It's actually in pretty good shape under here. Clean all this up. That'll, this will be body color. This will be black. And look at the paint still on the brackets. This is smashed. I'll probably when the bumper got bashed in, so I'll uh, straighten that. The other side's okay, so I know exactly how it needs to be straightened. I'll clean out all the seam sealer and re-seam seal it before I paint it. That's going to be down the road before I'm to this part of the car. I'm going to try and get that straightened out, though, and the bumper straightened up so I can get the bumper off the chrome plating. I don't know if I showed these or not, but anyway, I bead blasted and painted the rear brake drums, too. Well, today has been a really productive day. I got my tooth fixed. I got that painted. <laughs> and I got my differential carrier, or my pig back. And uh, I'll show you the bill on it, but that needs to be painted. But now that I have the um, pig back, I'm going to hardcore start getting the undercarriage done and painted. Tomorrow I'm going to pop those shocks out and the springs and I'm going to sand the spring pockets. I didn't want to sand anything today with tacky paint. Yeah, I even painted up. It was a little hard to, you know, spray to get this edge in here, but I did it through the wheel well and trunk opening. But yeah, that's you can see the gear pattern. They put like a it's like a grease that they put on, and it, it's got to leave a pattern in the in the teeth. And uh, so, yeah, all new bearings, all new seals, completely gone through and set up. He said it was in really good shape. Um, all new bearings, like I say, this is everything. Well, that's the new gasket it came with, but... The bearing races. I'll keep the stuff with the car so when I sell it, the next owner can have it all. That's the crush sleeve. And if people over tighten their pinion nut after changing their seal, and you crush that too much, you pull that ring gear or the pinion gear away from the ring gear and you change that tooth pattern. And you can actually damage the differential by doing that. You always want to make sure you, you know, take the thing apart and do it right. If you got a leaking pinion seal, yeah, you can change it um, without pulling the carrier. You got to have an inch pound torque wrench to see what the pip preload is on your bearings, and then you retorque that nut to what the preload was, and then you tighten it to another. Oh, I think seven or eight inch pounds, and that's it. But I see, and you don't hammer on your yoke at all. I see people on YouTube beat the yokes back on, and then they just reef them down, and I'm like, oh my god, that diff's life has just been shortened. So, yeah, so we got this is the that's the seal. Pretty nasty. Um, these are the bearing races. They got some staining in them from from uh, sitting in one spot. You can see the staining in that one. They're not pitted, but they are stained. Um, this one, that that mark, and it's where he punt knocked it out with a punch. So yeah, that's these are just ultra, ultra gooey and nasty. So these bearings here go here and here. These bearings go up in there. But yeah, it's it, and also this car has a unique yoke. The actual rear U joint on the drive shaft has bigger cups for this yoke than the drive shaft. And the guy there. At, drivetrain specialist even told me he says 66 had a 
uh, unique yoke, and he said they couldn't find a yoke for it, so they had to put a one of those ready sleeves on it to because it had a little bit of a groove where the ceiling surface was. So yeah, we'll give this thing a nice nice paint job back to that primer color and uh, paint that all black and get this puppy back in there and get it back together. I just thought I would just, uh, you know, I thought maybe some of my viewers would be interested in seeing the, the death. These hold, these hold this from turning because you're setting, you set this one way or the other with these. And, uh, so yeah, you got to make sure you have, you know, you know what you're doing when you work on differentials so you don't mess them up. Just trying to get some light in there. There you go. See the pinion in there now. This is the the bill if you're interested. So the the bearing kit or the bearing all the bearings was um I believe that this was ninety seventy nine was the well it says IK eight three dash one zero one one B Ford nine inch or nine BK. Look they even call it a peg. Um I think that one of the speedy sleeve was was thirty six dollars. The shop supplies, the labor. I think the labor was eighty five. I don't. But anyway, the total grand total three hundred and fifteen dollars even. So I can't. I think that's all right. I've had God probably five or six differentials and a couple two or three drive shafts balance there and at least at least five or six diffs rebuilt there or gone through. So I'm happy that's peace of mind. I'm gonna put new bearings on the axle shafts. I have them and uh, I'll get all that cleaned up. But after I get the underneath all painted, then I'll get in there and clean the housing out really, really good. And uh, it cleans up pretty easy with a lacquer thinner. So I'll just get in there with some, I'll pour some lacquer thinner in the bottom and get my, get a brush and get in there and clean it all the best I can. Then just scoop the muck out of the bottom and we'll get it all cleaned up. So I'm going to call it a day and uh, I'm going to put some photos after this of a 68 Pontiac Bonneville four-door that the guy that uh, helped me with my at DTS, the guy that checked me out and stuff, checked it in, checked it out. He drives it as an everyday car. And he said he would sell it. He said he'd like to, you know, maybe get four grand for it. I'll put a uh, few pictures of it at the end of the video. You know, if somebody's interested, just contact Eric at Drivetrain Specialist. They could probably, he could probably talk to you about the car, you know, if somebody's interested. It was, you know, it, it was a needs work. I mean, it's a 68. Come on. Yeah, it needed a little chrome and some trim. And he says he has all the body trim for it and everything. You know, a little bit of upholstery work. You know, what what car that age isn't going to need some work. You know, it's just kind of his everyday car right now. It's got a 400, I believe 400 four barrel single exhaust. Well, if you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this neat old Galaxy, have new chrome on it, new paint, and running and driving, and all this done up, and everything finished up on this car, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching my videos.